All right, so now the Conservation Commission meeting is officially convened. And as the first item of business under other business, we're going to uh, discuss a project uh, with Mike Dennehy related to Laird's Pond. So I'm going to share the screen. So hopefully you all can see. Can see that? Yes? Yep. Yep. All right. It's all yep. yours, Mike. Go ahead. Um, what I'm what I'm interested in doing is uh, uh, at 63 Dickinson Hill Road, there's a pond, and I think Scott has has uh, uh, is familiar with it. Um, I'm proposing putting in a uh, it's an overflow drain. She's having problems with the existing drain is either collapsed or uh, it's clogged with the roots. We don't really know which, but it'll only take about. 10% of what the flow. So when they get, uh, when she gets uh, some heavy rain, the pond fills up and is ready to overflow. And she's afraid it's going to affect the surrounding uh, properties. And my, my proposal to you, and I'm looking for advice from you, is to uh, install just a surface drain. Uh, the drain that's in there now is a, is a, was put in when the pond was built, probably say 50 or 60 years ago <clears throat> um, and it's a it's a very deep drain and to in order to do anything with that drain would mean uh, it'd be uh, have a lot of adverse re effects on the pond the surface drain that I'm proposing is just all it would do is set a tank on the edge of the pond and take off any of the overflow and put it right into the same and the existing uh, goes right into the manhole in, on the road, and the existing one also does. It was put in by the town. So I'm, uh, I'm, what I'm trying to do is just uh, install um, the new drainage system that has very little effect on uh, the pond in any way, either, either uh, during construction or uh, after. It doesn't affect the, the level or anything. That's a that's kind of if you look at the uh, drawing there, it uh, it's a very simple drawing, but it kind of shows what I'm thinking. But I am looking for to you guys for either if there's a better solution or uh, um, if you can direct me on to, uh, how I should proceed. Yes, yeah, so uh, my. I'm guessing that a lot of this pipe that you're showing in the illustration is not in place now, and that it's it not. would require some excavation in order to install that. It would, Scott. It would. Uh, it would. It would be very light excavation, though, and it, around the pond itself would be very, very minimal. Maybe uh, two or three feet into the pond, set the tank, and that would be it. And it, it wouldn't be changing the pond the height or anything. Okay, so. Um, I assume you're going to need to trench into the pond. How do you avoid the water flowing through your trench? Uh, well, the, the, what, I, what I think we're going to do is set the tank. What you do is you set the tank, and it'll be set right down onto the bottom. And new piping will be put in. You don't allow water into that tank until everything is in. You, you cut a notch in the tank at the at the uh, overflow height that you want, and then water flows in. So there could be um, there could be a little bit that that uh, would try to drain out. But I, what I was wondering, and you can advise me on this, but it, if it if it would be okay to lower the pond by a foot, it's probably an eight foot deep pond. Just lower it by a foot while I'm doing it, and there would be no water escaping. Would you use a hose and a pump to do that? Um, I would probably use a siphon. That way, there's no mechanical. Uh, mm -hmm. That if that's uh, what you might recommend. And you would then discharge that to the existing storm drain. Yeah, correct. Yeah, right where the pond drains now. Yep. Um, other commissioners have questions. Feel free to speak up. Well, I have a couple questions. Is there a picture of what it looks like now? 
Uh, I I don't have anything that, of what it looks like now. Um, <clears throat> I'm having trouble picturing what's going on right now. Uh, as far as the drainage, uh, I can give you an idea. How, the drain, my drain is com is showing it coming off the surface of the pond. The drainage that's there now is actually a bottom drain of the pond, and it goes, uh, it's down probably eight feet, and just comes straight out. Uh, in, or, in order to go down and do that, that would be very in, invasive to the pond. So I was hoping not to have to go after the existing drain and fix that. I'd rather just do just do the surface uh, drain. They they put in the original drain was put in so the pond could be drained, and they don't do that. And if they ever wanted to, I mean, they'd have to pump the pond dry or something if they if it was needed needed to be for some reason and i had one other question the email that came in earlier it had two drawings what's the difference between um, the two drawings uh um there is no difference i'm not sure why it did that that's the same okay. drawing. Sorry. it was okay. just electronically when we when we took a picture of that there were two options one was a jpeg and the other was a pdf okay thank you that, that's all it is yeah I just have a question. You said the existing drain is clogged. Do you think about it's only about ten percent coming through right now? Well, you said roots or something's in it. There, there's something. Uh, I do believe it's roots, but it it could be. It's a galvanized drain uh, pipe that was put in, and it could just be collapse or collapsing. Uh, very, very. It'll handle the pond, uh, the drainage of the pond, unless they get rain, and it was. Uh, It'll come way, way up. It'll go down real slow. But um, what again, what she's worried about is damage to the na the neighbor's driveway is very close to the pond and uh, heavy, heavy rain. It's going to it's probably going to get worse. And uh, that's what she's trying to avoid. This new if you get this newer system in, were you going to block off the old drain or abandon it somehow or? Um, I, I think I'll look to you guys for guidance from that about that. Um, what I what I think uh, again least invasive would be just leave that drain alone. I don't think I don't think it would fail to the point where it's going to drain the pond. I think it's failing the other way where it's going to just slowly. So I'd rather not do anything to it, but I could okay. but I could block it off if you guys advise that. How old is this pond? Um, the pond is itself is very, very old. Um, and I'm only going by what I've been told by neighbors. And uh, but the uh, but the pond in the 60s was turned into, <clears throat> well, basically a swimming hole. There was a family that lived all around there and it was turned into uh, uh, I think they did some they put the drain in in the I think it was in the early 60s somewhere, maybe mid 60s drain that's in there now. Before that, I couldn't tell you how it drained, but I would assume it went across the field somehow. Uh, there's now a driveway there and it's... You said the existing drain goes to a storm drain? Yeah, it does. It goes right out to the road. Now, talk to Keith Bardwell about it. Uh, he put, he, they put in drainage later, uh, uh, 25 years ago, they put in road drainage. And this uh, used to drain into an open ditch right there, and they just put it into the storm drain, which then goes down, and um, it does open up again down the road. Some some time ago, maybe a year or two ago, Keith asked me to go out and take a look at the pond because he was worried about the, how high the water was getting and that it might be a problem for the road. Um, and so I looked at it and I agree, the water level was very high, you know, up near the surface of the road. And uh, I, I don't have a problem with, you know, lowering the water level. I think that would be an important thing to do. And I think this, um, this surface drain is, is, sounds like a good option to me, uh, rather than try to drain the whole pond and get down to that drain down in the, in the bottom. The surface drain allows it to continue to fill up, but only to a certain level. So it would not, you know, it would not make it possible or, or uh, for it to be intentionally or, or accidentally sort of opened up and then drain the whole pond. Uh, 
So I, I think the proposal sounds good. I think that because it's a pond and because you'll be in the pond a little bit, it's going to require the filing of a, of a notice of intent uh, with us in order to uh, for us to permit it. But at least from my point of view, I don't see any obstacle to, to getting that permit. Um, okay. Okay. Other folks, what do you think? I think a surface drain seems the, the smartest just to maintain the pond, the largest way, like I said, with it being the discharge into the storm day, does that connect anywhere to the Westbrook down there or anything? I'm just trying to think, or is it just? Uh, I don't, I don't think it's the Westbrook. I think it connects to some smaller streams that meet around yeah. the center of town. Okay. So yeah, no, no issue there then. Okay. Yeah. It seems, seems feasible. Like you said, with just a notice of intent. At least I think that's where the water goes, but I'm not sure. <laughs> well, it sounds good to me. I don't have any issues. I don't either. And I, I don't have any problem with you lowering the water level in order to, to install it either. It's just that we're probably going to want to wait until you know spring or after to, to do that work because uh, any wildlife that's burrowed into the mud for the winter um, if they get exposed, they're going to be in trouble. So in order to protect any animals that are overwintering in the pond, it would be better to do it, you know, once the, once things are, uh, you know, up and about again uh, in the springtime. Okay. Okay. That sounds good. I appreciate that. Um, I will, um, yes, I pick up a form. Do I to, to uh, file that? Yeah. Uh, the form is not going to be a lot of fun. Um, I can send it to you uh, via email. Um, but if you want to try to fill it out yourself, um, I can help help you with that answer questions, sort of review it for, for mistakes and suggest changes and things like that. Generally, the form would then get sent both to us and to the DEP office in Springfield. And the DEP folks like to see actual site plans at one to 50 foot scale. Um, so it's also, if it, if it's something that the Lairds, um, would be amenable to doing it, it might make the whole thing easier if you get a consultant to do the, the notice of intent packet for the, for submittal. It's, uh, um, it sounds like, it sounds like maybe that's what I should do then. Uh, yeah. Um, can I, can I get a little more in information from, uh, after, after the meeting here, maybe from you or, uh, sure. Absolutely. Um, good, good. I appreciate I can, you guys. I can give, give you the names of people who work and do a work in Waitley on a fairly frequent basis that know us and, and know okay. how to, how to get the material together. Good. good. I appreciate it. Um, I will, um, uh, again, I thank everybody for their time and, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll probably give you a call, Scott. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, I'll do that. Did I give you my phone number? I think I did I, on one of the emails. Yep, I do have it. I do have it. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you for your time. All right, Mike. Yep. Have a good have night. A good night. All right. Um, I guess the next order of business, why don't we deal with the minutes from the last meeting? Uh, so anybody have any uh, comments or corrections about last month's minutes? No. Nope. nope. All right. So all in favor of uh, of approving the minutes, uh, Andrew? Aye. Ann? Aye. Montserrat? Aye. And I vote aye. All right. Um, so then the other order of business was this um, this call for proposals from the town for the uh, COVID relief funding that's coming to the town. And it's about $450,000. And in my discussions with Keith, it sounds like there's a committee that's been convened by the select board uh, that includes representatives from the schools and from the water department and, and probably others. Word of uh, health. Board of Health and Select Board too, right? So um, I guess they're going to review the proposals that are received. Uh, the initial 
notice that I got gave a deadline of December 7th or December 9th. It was really short turnaround from when we received it. Um, it's since been extended into early January. So there's an opportunity to submit additional proposals. But in the absence of time uh, to put something together before, uh, it, we didn't have time to meet again before the deadline. <laughs> so I've sort of freelanced it a bit. I contacted uh, Keith and said, you know, is there a way we could look for a highway project that would be good for the environment and good, you know, for for his interest in terms of uh, roads and transportation. So Keith and I met uh, at, to talk through some options. There are a lot of things that I had on a list that were possibilities, including maybe paving Conway Road or paving Westbrook Road or paving Williamsburg Road because there are there's so much sediment that comes off of dirt roads and uh, the fish people that are working in the Westbrook say that the the habitat conditions are not great because of all the sediment that fills in the voids underneath and between the rocks. So there's very little place, few places where the fish can go uh, to get sheltered. But all of that would be way too expensive for you know a piece of four hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars. We talked about some culvert replacement projects, and the one that seemed most affordable is a thirty-six inch culvert. Uh, on a tributary to Sanderson Brook on Williamsburg Road, uh, just before you hit the Williamsburg town line. Uh, that's broken on the inlet side. So from a highway point of view, it's, it's a high priority to fix that before it is completely compromised. And uh, the entire stream network above the dam uh, at the reservoir is pretty much isolated from the West Brook. So any populations of fish or other animals in that stream have got to stay interconnected for as much of that stream, stream length as possible uh, in order to maintain the kind of numbers that you would need for genetic and demographic viability. So this would be an opportunity to take an undersized culvert and open it up and uh, make a better connection between that tributary and the Sanderson Brook main stem uh, in that area. So. Uh, Keith and I went ahead and, and wrote it up and submitted it. Um, so I'll, I, I'm giving you that as an update, but I also want to open it up for discussion in case there are other ideas that you might have that you might want to have written up and submitted as well. Can it be any like bridge repair there too? Or I just think you said road projects. I'm just thinking. You could do bridge repair, but it would have to be a fairly small repair in order to not eat up the entire four hundred and fifty thousand no, dollars. I was thinking the one on Christian Lane there that they got barricaded right now. I don't know how, big, how bad that one is. <laughs> yeah, I think that's going to be a bigger, more expensive. Yeah. Job. Keith also talked about the the Great Swamp Brook on Christian Lane. That that I guess they've gotten a grant to do some pre preliminary design work on that and. We may be able to go to the Mass uh, Division of Ecological Restoration for a second grant to actually replace that culvert. So since there's a line which on one, other money, which one are you talking about, Scott? It's right near the Castaway, it, where the oh, Great okay. Swamp Brook crosses Christian Lane. Oh, the okay. name for that. <laughs> yeah, it's Great Swamp Brook, and uh, the it's a I guess it's a mason a stone culvert, and it's been you know. Essentially, uh, it's, it's created a sinkhole in the past that had to be patched, and it's just going to continue to create sinkholes until it's replaced. Uh, so that's another one that's actually going to be replaced to meet the stream crossing standards. So that's another good project in town. Um, so anyway, tell, what do you think? Yeah, well, it sounds like good ideas, the ones you proposed. So. So can we put in a proposal for the Great Swamp Brook culvert replacement as well? Well, I think because DER is funding the design work, they're likely to fund the replacement work as well. So oh. the thinking is, is that if we already have a line on some funding for that project, then we could use this um, COVID money for something different.
know, another one that we had talked about is uh, on Conway Road where Jimmy Nolan Brook crosses under Conway Road. Uh, and so that might be a reasonable option. It's just that it's bigger and so it'd probably be more expensive. And so if the, uh, if the schools want a piece of this, if the water department wants a piece of this, if other people want a piece, I don't think anybody's gonna get any single project that costs a lot. You know, you gotta be reasonable about what share of the pot you're asking for, I guess. So do you feel like the culvert was our piece and we should let other people get the other pieces? No, I think we can put in any other competing ones that we want because the people on the committee might feel like one project is more compelling than another. And if we have more irons in the fire, then we may have more option, more likelihood of getting at least one of them funded. I don't have any other ideas. Yeah, me, I'm just trying to think. I can't think of anything at the moment either. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the Conservation Commission doesn't really have a way to implement projects. I mean, we could potentially contract it out, but it seemed to me like a highway project was the easiest thing I could think of that would. There's so many areas that I'd like to see projects that are out of our purview. Yeah, well, we can uh, always suggest it to those other agencies or departments and see if they would bite on, on a good idea. You know, I mean, one thing is, is, and the one thing I talked about with Keith is, is that if he wants to propose a project and the Conservation Commission is on board with it, it might give it more credence uh, because there's two town entities that are backing a project. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I told him I couldn't commit the Conservation Commission because we hadn't met to vote on it and that I, I could say that I endorse it individually. But now that we're meeting and the deadline hasn't passed yet, if you want, we can take a vote. And if you want to endorse it as a commission, I can pass that on to Keith uh, to communicate uh, to the committee. That makes sense. Do you mean endorsing the culvert project that you already submitted? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. I'm good with that. Yeah, give it some likes. Okay. I'll pass that information on to Keith. I think that's it's nice when we can have multiple boards uh, getting on board a, a single project that can have co-benefits in that way. Does anybody else have any? Yeah, anybody want to say anything more about this before we move on? I don't think so. I don't think so. Does anybody have any other business or or news to share? What was the other email that you sent out, Scott? Was some, was that just part of that COVID on you sent out about Haydenville Road there or something? Uh, uh, it's something that I didn't know about till I got it, but apparently oh. the last DOT is going to have some kind of uh, Zoom meeting to talk about work on Haydenville Road. And I will see if I can uh, attend it, but I guess any of you that would be interested uh, are welcome to attend as well. Uh, I guess it's an opportunity for us to raise concerns about, you know, stormwater or culverts or uh, impact on wetlands uh, that should be taken into account for the design work. I, they're at, I think, 25% at the 25% design phase. Um, so I don't really even know what the scope of that is. So, so I'll, I'll find out when I go. Yeah, it like seems like a real big project. I was reading it. So they're saying from the Williamsburg line all the way to the bridge at Conway Road, it sounded like I was reading it. I mean, I was involved. Uh, actually, now it's sort of ringing some bells. Uh, Williamsburg Conservation Commission invited us to or invited me to attend their meeting when they were going to discuss this project in Williamsburg because part of it was going to involve a Waitley section of it. So basically, well, only, go ahead. It's only one and a half miles. Okay. Is that towards the Williamsburg line though? It says the project limits 
for Haydenville Road are from the bridge structure, 150 feet south of the Conway Road intersection to the Williamsburg town line. This is one and a half miles. So the bridge south of the Conway, that is that the Westbrook Bridge? That's what I was thinking. It's like, is that 100, south? 150 feet south of the Conway Road intersection. Yeah, that's got to be the Westbrook then. Um, so it's going to the Westbrook, going in which direction? Towards the center or towards Williamsburg? Towards Williamsburg. It says yeah. the project consists of reclaiming the existing paved surface, box widening with a hot mix asphalt binder course and paving, blah, blah, blah. Work will include new drainage systems and improved stormwater quality near the Northampton Reservoir. Yeah, that's the part that I heard about when I went to the Williamsburg meeting is uh, they want to take some of the water that drains down the hill from the Waitley side down towards the reservoir and then treat it before it go, gets discharged, either that or, or to bypass the reservoir entirely and discharge the water below the reservoir so mm -hmm. that it doesn't have to meet drinking water standards. So anyway, you're you're welcome to join in that meeting. Uh, I'm going to try to make it and and see what we can learn from it. Clearly, they're going to have to come to us anyway as part of the permitting, but this is an opportunity to get any issues on their agenda early on before they finish most of the design work. Um, in other news, um, we got an email from DEP that Mark Stinson is no longer working there, or at least is on a leave of absence. And um, so they're down to one person now, just David Cameron. But I guess they've uh, created another person to serve as a contact a John Moriarty uh, has a new contact during Mark's absence. For questions, concerns, or issues on wetlands related matters, please reach out to John Moriarty. Uh, so it doesn't really affect us that much, but it's something to be aware of. I mean, Mark was somebody who was willing to come out whenever we had questions. And I think that DEP is going to be you know, much more constrained about how available they're going to be for such meetings or uh, to intervene in any appeals. So basically they had Tim McKenna retired, Dave Fowlis retired, and now Mark has left. So they have three vacancies in that office. Uh, although I don't know, I mean, Mark's is a leave. So I don't know if there's any prospect of him coming back. Well, are they going to fill them or are they short on money? I've seen, um, I've heard from DEP that they're hoping to fill the two that were vacant before, Tim McKenna's and Dave Fallis's positions. Uh, this one for Mark Stinson is, is newer, uh, so I don't know what DEP is planning to do, but I'll try to find out. Um, let's see, other news. There's um, so the uh, the Hannum Common Driveway project that we permitted up on Ma uh, Masterson Road mm -hmm. uh, because of the endangered species involved, they had to go through MEPA, you know, the Massachusetts Environmental Policy Act uh, process. So we got notice that there's going to be a uh, Looks like a consultation, a notice of remote MEPA consultation. So I can, I don't think I sent this to you, right? But I can send it to you if you're interested. And then uh, they essentially uh, set up a Microsoft Teams project and uh, added us as a guest. So 
if we want to get involved, if we want to go on Microsoft Teams to look at the materials that they're submitting via MIPA, we can do that. And so if you want to see any of that stuff, let me know and I can go in and get it for you. But it's all going to be stuff we've seen before in terms of uh, the wetland crossing there. And I think the only thing that they're going to talk about is stuff that, that uh, Tony has already told us they're planning to do in terms of protecting some of that land back there to protect the rare species. Speaking of some of that land, I was uh, took a walk back there. Must be a snowmobile trail. It goes off of Dickinson Hill Road past um, where it's a dirt road where that washout was. Remember, you went up and looked at it. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm assuming it's Hannam's land because there's a lot of Pete Hannam stuff that's been stored along the road. I know there's stored. some. Yeah, well, <laughs> I don't think he considers it trash. I guess that's what I'm getting at. But anyway, I noticed that the um, there's some barrels of what I'm assuming at one point had, you know, oil or something in it, some sort of chemical, you know, because they're, they're metal barrels. Mm. And that whole area is kind of wet in there. I, I, I hadn't been back there in a long time and um, just happened to notice it. Mm. And it's too bad. Whatever has been deposited out there, it's been there for a while. Is that where that like abandoned camper is? I think there was an abandoned camper yes. up there too. Yeah, it's on that road. Yeah. Closer to closer down the hill, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if, if that land is gonna get donated to the division, you know, mass fish and game, in which case they might need to clean that up in order to do that. Um, but anyway, if I find some spare time, maybe I'll go walking up there and take a look at it myself. Yeah, just say, if you're looking for a place to walk, just wander up there. You'll in with the bittersweet and the <laughs> whatever. whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so I think the only other thing was um, that Montserrat had emailed me about Zoom bombing. Uh, so, Monty, why don't you tell them what you told me in the email? And sure. Um, so, you might remember that about a year ago, um, I was in. I work at GCC, and um, we had a horrible Zoom bombing experience in a um, in an all college meeting where there were outside people, and it was it was really um, it was really disturbing and upsetting, and. Um, and, um, and then more recently, just a couple of weeks ago, um, I, and I brought it up back then, but then a couple of weeks ago, a friend of mine who lives in Shelburne was hosting the open space meeting on Zoom and they were Zoom bombed. And they're like, um, you know, uh, similar to us in their um, small scale, um, but they were, uh, somebody um, came on and replaced their, uh, it's an open meeting like ours and they replaced their um screen with pornography and it was um you know people were shocked and didn't know what to do at first and um but my friend who was hosting the meeting um managed to uh disable participants because there's a place where the host can disable participants so um he went he sent an email to the people who were in that meeting afterwards saying this is what we should do in the future just so we're prepared um, and what you should do is disable participants as soon as something goes wrong. Like if you, um, hear or see inappropriate material, that's not supposed to be in the meeting. Um, the host can do that. And then everybody else just waits, um, while the host removes whoever is causing the trouble and the other people wait. And then the host can send you a message that it's safe to come back on. Um, so I just thought we should be prepared for that. Um, I don't want it to happen to me again. Uh, it, it sounds kind of funny, but when you when it actually happens, it's really upsetting. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> yeah, um, I remember when uh, when this uh, when COVID started, they sort of told us to look out for this, but I totally forgot what to do, you know, if it ever happened. So your email was really helpful, and I and I went online and I looked and I got to the point where I know exactly what to do. Right. But uh, you know, Monty thought it might be a good idea for us to do a trial run. You know, for me to basically shut down the meeting and then start it up again just so you know what it looks like when it happens. Sure. Uh, and that way, if it, if it does happen, you probably won't get any notice. Everything will just shut off. You, you won't see anything. You won't be able to speak. You won't hear anything. And you're supposed to just hang on. And then once I've disposed of the intruder, I just have to open up my mic, unmute myself and put, turn on the camera. And I think you'll all be able to come back once I do that. So we can give it a try and just double check and see if it works. Um, you want to wait for George to be here? Um, I figured we could test it now. We can test it again when George comes. And that okay. way, sure. uh, we won't be. That just makes perfect. Yeah. I mean, I, I actually got really nervous that, that this person might, I mean, if they're hitting Shelburne's open space committee, you know, it's like, yeah, we could be next. There's nothing small enough that they won't yeah. be. Yeah. There's no rhyme or reason to it. And so one, one protection we have is, is that as people want to join the meeting, I have to admit people. And so if I see a strange name or phone number or something, I can sort of make a mental note of it and then try to, um, you know, sort of ask, who are you? You know, what's your interest tonight? And see what kind of response I get while I have my finger on the button of the security feature to to shut things down if they panic. Do people have to identify themselves or can they attend anonymously? I don't think they have to. I mean, I think we're free to ask. Yeah. And then, you know, like we do at meetings when we say, you know, just for the minutes, could you identify yourself so we can put it in the minutes? Uh, I think just by asking, we might spook some people into either revealing themselves, so to speak, or, um, or abandoning their quest. All right, so you ready for me to hit the panic button and see what it's like? All right. See what happens. <laughs> All right, here we go. Yeah, it was interesting. You popped up like immediately, Scott. <laughs> yeah. So I had to actually go into participants and ask you to unmute. Um, we still maybe can't start can... our videos, though. Yeah. Can you turn on your videos? Um, no, no, we can't. No. No, it says, no, hide self, you. It says unable to start video. All right. Let me see. More. Uh, in the chat. No. All right. Let's see. What if I put you in the waiting room and then invite you back? We'll see what happens. All right, Andy, can you un unmute and try to turn on your video?
All right, so this is a, an issue. I can't get, I'll try one more thing. I mean, none of the options that I can pick up are actually seem to be working. Um, oh, all right, I can, all right, I had to unlock the meeting. Now I can uh, enable the waiting room. Okay, try now. See if you can. Yep. Now we can do it. All right. So that that wasn't on on Google, they didn't tell me how to do this, but <laughs> apparently I have to go on, I have to click the security icon and then there are all these different options that, that got triggered when I suspended the meeting. And so now I had to go back and, and unsuspend all of that stuff. Um, so I, I can let be unmuted, but I can't start my video. Okay. That's, well. <laughs> how about now? No, lost. Let's see. All right. Uh, uh, I mean, huh? <laughs> yeah, I'm unmuted, but I can't. It says the host still has stopped me from being viewed. So. All right. Well, let me. I guess. I guess Andy was the bad actor. Yeah. <laughs> Darn. All right. Now I can ask you to. There it is. Okay. There we go. Yeah. So All I right. guess. Yeah. So it is good to practice. <laughs> yeah. Find the little glitches. Yeah. 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 And and let's practice one more time when George is here, and then we'll really yeah. be ready. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I feel like we're prepared now for any interlopers, uh, but I really appreciate you bringing that to my attention, Montserrat, and uh, I think I'm better prepared now. <laughs> Never know what could happen. So I don't have anything else. Does anybody else have anything else for tonight? Mm -mm. No. All right. In that case, uh, I guess we can say goodbye and happy holidays. And I'm sorry that we can't meet at the Waitley Inn for a hot toddy. <laughs> um, but one of these days, we'll be able to do that. And uh, in the meantime, you know, have a really wonderful holiday season. Stay safe. Yeah, and you we'll too. See you next year. Bye. All, right. All Bye -bye. the best, guys. Yeah, you too.